Well, those who are tracking with us, welcome back to Midwest Meanderings and our homesteading vlog. So anyway, we are establishing our 10 acres and getting some garden beds going. And I just wanted to tell you how we make garden beds pretty inexpensively. All right, so we're just finishing. Go ahead, babe. Just cutting this eight foot board into two four, four foot pieces. Sorry, Rachel's arm looked like it was in harm's way, but I promise you it was not. But she was just studying it for us. And then that our second bed is about to be assembled. So babe, how much did we spend on the wood and materials? Uh, wood, 170, we already had screws. Yep, so we are building two four by eight beds for 170 buckaroos at the end. Woo woo. All right, here comes the last of the wood and the end pieces have already been cut. So many hands have made light work and seriously we have done this in just a matter of minutes. So all we did was secure it with, with those four inch screws, Keith? Three and a half. Three and a half inch screws. And I have been making these for 15 years. I have planted many a garden. That means the Lord has had me, me meandering all over the place. But Keith and Rachel are gonna finish this one. It'll probably take about five minutes. Um, and then we're going to get over there and clean up all the debris from the last windstorm. Yep, we are contemplating how we're going to store things in Holden, where the wind blows wild. So, of course, we all get to participate. So, this is the last corner, and this bed is about to go in, and we're going to dig down a foot and do a hugoculture bed. So, here we go. Ready, babe? <laughs> Now well, they're coming down the hill to their destination. That was amazingly fast. And these are the best garden beds. They will last, the ones that I built 15 years ago are still being used back in the south. Untreated wood. I'm not... All right, this bed is ready for original soil to go in. We got three layers of Hugo culture, the original soil going in. And then the top six inches will be some wonderful compost and hay, just like we did over there. So for about 11 years now, we've been making Hugo culture beds. So we dig down a foot. A good friend of mine, um, her dad taught me this. He didn't, he didn't use the name Hugo culture. I, I later found out that language. But you dig down, you do a foot down, and that foot down is now going to be your waterproof bed. It's going to, and I'm gonna flip it around and finish telling you that. Well, Keith's digging that out, I'm gonna explain a little bit more. If you've heard about Hugo culture, so basically you're digging it out and then you're gonna put organic matter back in. You can put anything. We've got lots of trees that need to come down. They're overcrowded around the pond. Um, and then we've got lots of leaves that we gathered from last fall that we've used around our trees that we've already planted, but we're gonna put those back in. And then you put back in the original soil and you can actually break up the grass roots and put those back in too. But by doing this technique, basically it's water conservation because everything that's gonna decompose down below is inviting the worms to the party, which is, yeah, we want that, right? But it also holds moisture. So your beds are going to be drought proof um, and they'll only get better as time progresses. So yeah, we've done this technique. The coolest thing is um, the first time we did Hugo culture here was 11 seasons ago and we didn't get all of them done. There was two beds that we did not do that with. And so, you know, we had a lot of snow that winter. And so the following spring, you know, we're getting ready and we have this, you know, of course there's always like a foot of snow we get just before spring hits. And the Hugo culture beds, which are decomposing all the wood that we're gonna put in there, those beds, all the snow melted first. And all the other beds um, still had lots of snow on it like days later. So all that, you know, organic matter that we're putting in that bed is gonna decompose and it's gonna compost and cook. So yeah, win-win situation. You're taking a bunch of wood that you would not otherwise use but it could be good wood. I mean, I personally don't. We're just using wood that we're taking down from trees that are dead. And it's definitely not wood we would burn in our fireplace or our wood stove. So we're gonna keep on going, getting these all dug out, filling them with debris. And I'll show you that next step as we backfill. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Rach. Uh -huh. I'll get a little video. Rachel's hatching, taking one piece out at a time. Her pieces are way bigger than mine. She's one strong girl. 
So all this original soil is actually going to go back in. I'm not sure if I highlighted that in my last video. This will get woven in somewhere in this um, how to make a garden bed video. This is all finished. And as you see, the soil is going back in. It's about to rain tonight, so we came back out. And these big old plugs are getting put back on as the final layer of Hugo culture. So we've got, we're going down 12 inches, backfilling with wood and anything you've got, really. I mean, we've, we're taking down wood that's rotten. We're taking down wood that's trees that are too close together. And over time, they'll all decompose. So we're putting in a lot of amendments that will decompose over time. So layer upon layer. And then our final layer is going to be the original soil. And the key thing with this, <laughs> because the only thing we're leaving room for is six inches of compost. So we are putting in the original soil flipped. So we're putting it back in grass side down and then it will decompose and it will add more nitrogen and goodness to the soil. And then this will get chopped in. So I'm gonna get Rachel to hold up for a minute. And if you can lift one of those chunks that you just did, can you put it right here? So we're gonna put this and we're gonna put it snug against the wall because we're trying to smother out any grass that we didn't get. See, as you can see around the edges right there, there's gonna be a tiny bit we can't get to. And if you wanna be really picky, you can. So grass side down. and it's snug against the wall. So we're smothering things in and then it's gonna to rain tonight. So when we come back on Sunday, we'll be able to chop this in and make it pretty even. And then our last six inches, they're gonna come in and that'll be our compost and we'll be planting this weekend. Cherry blossoms everywhere and the sun is setting and all four walls are up. Glory to God. Whoop, whoop. Our home is coming together. Nice to talk to you in the daytime. We do a lot of work in the evening just because that's what we have. So we use what we have because we want to establish, establish a sustainable farm that can sustain us and others. And maybe even, you know, have something to sell or give away or whatever one day. So this was the bed we finished up the other night with the original soil. We came back, chopped it in. I didn't show you that process. It looked a little tedious. We had a huge rain yesterday, so it made the chopping in a lot easier. Then we put a, a nice layer of hay, just because our soil is pretty dense. It's a lot of clay, which is gonna be great for retaining moisture. Um, and then I just put in our first wave on top of that first bit of hay of um, compost. And I got this actually from Kansas City Community Gardens because you can get it for a song. Oh my gosh, it was ended up being ridiculously inexpensive, but there's a limit. They only give, let you get six bags, I think something like that. So I got my limit for the whole summer. So I put that, a couple of those bags out. And then we have a truckload of horse manure. Watch where you're walking, Rach. We're cutting out our second bed now. But this was smoking when we got it yesterday. So it's several years old, rich, black, not hot, but it's just gorgeous. So that is what we're going to finish off with for about five inches of that. And we're going to plant and yeah, we're going to have tomatoes. So we'll show you that process as we get going, but that bed's just about to be completely done. We've got tomatoes from our Kansas City Community Gardens over there. Um, and there's, those community gardens are everywhere. So check out what you've got locally because they love to help families garden, you know, so we got plants for a song for just a cheap membership. And then we got uh, 10 packs of free seeds and those seeds in itself paid more than our membership. So isn't that amazing? So anyway, so we've got tons of gorgeous tomato plants. Normally I would start all those from seed myself in February, first of February, but not this year because we don't have a greenhouse yet, but we will be building one this fall. So anyway, we're gonna keep on going and we'll show you the steps along the way, but this bed is almost finished and it's nice to just show you a planted bed when you make a Hugo Culture bed. So it's Hugo Culture, but it's a garden bed. And again, like I said, 15 year bed, it's really more than 15. I've never had it break down. I even went back and saw beds that I made 15 years ago and they looked pristine with untreated wood, which is super awesome. So anyway, we're gonna get back to work. Well, bed's planted. We've got a dozen um, tomato plants in there, four different varieties, so three of each. 
Um, but yeah, it's completely done. The only thing I'm going to do now is put the cover on. So sheet composting, back to Eden technique, um, lasagna gardening, all of them teach put the cover on. So for me, I'm going to dampen some hay because I know we're not going to get rain for a few days. That's what's going to be my final layer. Gently, of course, because, you know, we don't want to whack our tomatoes. But I'm just going to hay this in and, yeah, garden bed is done for a song for 15 years. Y'all definitely want to make this beautiful garden bed. I'll show it to you when it's all the way finished. Well, we're done. The only thing this bed will need is I will put some cattle panels up with T-Post. If you want to see our technique for that, just check out any of our old garden tours. Um, but actually, we've been doing that for years, but we copied it from Roots and Refuge, just at Roots and Refuge. Well, our tiny greenhouse worked lovely, and Mary and I are going to plant... What are we planting, Mary? Sunflowers. Uh-huh, some Goliath sunflowers. And of course, sunflowers are gorgeous, but they invite the pollinators. So Mary is going to put plant our first one in. So we just take the container with it, plant it with it. Look at all those roots. See, I told you that soil down below um, is where all those soil, all those roots went. They went beneath the egg carton. So here you go, Mary. We're going to plant that. Just put it down in gently. And we're going to backfill a little bit, just not a ton because it's tiny. Can you backfill it a little? All right. And we're going to have some lovely sunflowers to invite the pollinators into our garden bed. So we're gonna spread these out along this tomato bed and aren't they cute? So this is the results of our tiny greenhouse. It worked, whoop, whoop. The other ones are still going, but those are ones that pop up a little bit later. Sunflower seeds pop up quick. All right, we're gonna keep planting. That is a truckload of work all that being dug out. Thank you, amazing family. I am taking a break and recording. See all that dirt? Oh my gosh, clay, hard. But Hugo culture is going down in. Beautiful, whoop, whoop, perfect, baby. Nailed it. Now we're gonna start chopping up wood and putting it in and hay and leaves. And then it's gonna look just like that one. Glory to God, whoop, whoop. Bed number two is almost done. I'm not sure which footage we'll put in. Yeah, because I think when we finish this bed over here, um, it was dark. So we'll probably give a glimpse of that one. We might do the full thing here. So this is fully dug out. Well, it's now level. Keith's going to cut wood to go in. We're putting leaves in. Hay's going in. Rachel, are you showing down here? Okay, so right now we're Hugo culture. We're 12 inches down. We're backfilling with last year's leaves that I collected from everybody I knew. <laughs> um, and wood's getting created, and some hay, and bed number two is about to be done, and we're gonna get that baby planted. Woo whoop! Mary did. So Mary just got us tons of hay in. And we've got leaves. Thank you for getting all the hay for us, Mary. Taking a book break. This is good to do. Rachel's laying in some logs that we've already got. And Keith is cutting down the other ones to make them smaller. Oh, wow. The sunsets here are so incredible. So Rachel is putting in a third layer. Our final layer will be a little more hay, and then we'll start with our compost. And the original soil is back in. Whoop, whoop. So now we're going to cover it with hay. And then the compost goes in and we plant bed number two. Yes. Many hands. Dirty hands. Yeah. My gloves. They got wet. So, you know, hands work great. So we're just putting the first few layers. A couple inches of some good compost that I got from my community garden. Really great price. I wish I could have got a hundred bags of these. I would have totally done it. But we've got some more horse manure compost that's getting delivered. We've already used the first batch. But we're just back filling over this layer of hay that covered up our wood. And now Hubs, 
has the good horse manure. We're dumping that in, and this is what we're. So Rachel is chatty Kathy and over there. She's so excited. We're about to go get some queso and some Mexican mm -hmm. after a nine-hour day. <laughs> But every tomato we bought is planted. So we have 30 tomatoes in these beds. Um, ground cherry tomato, which is our first year trying that one. And we've got Swiss chard sowed in between over there. We may end up thinning it and transplanting it somewhere else, but that's such rich soil. And we planted our tomatoes way closer together this year because they are going into six inches of straight compost. So I think they're gonna be awesome. And then I, every two to three weeks, put blood meal and bone meal, blood meal very carefully because you can burn with that, um, and worm castings around them. So yeah, we're mimicking what the Indians do with a fish head underneath. And a lot of people do eggshells or eggs. I just do bone meal, which works great. Thank you, Mary. Lots of pond water, water and everything in, and we are D-O-N-E done. Thank you, babe. You are the man of the hour. You're welcome, babe. Because we planted dogwood trees at our second culvert there. Look at my dirty hands. And a bunch of elderberries right there at the entrance. And then up on that hill right there, we planted four blackberries that we just picked up from um, a nice fella that we got our compost from yesterday. So anyway, everything is planted, everything is happy, and we are hungry, we are so hungry. Our snacks are gone. Beef jerky and apples, <laughs> uh -huh. they burned off hours ago. I mean, it's beautiful. So Hugo culture underneath, it is an investment on the front end, but I highly recommend it. But even if you don't, these garden beds are rock star. You're gonna love them. But if you put Hugo culture underneath, you're investing into the future. Say good night, girls. Good night. Many hands made light work. Bless you, Mary Berry, Ray Ray and the sweets who's loading the car. Ah, oh, the sun is gone and we're going to get some queso.